day, Father. Be glorified. Be magnified. In Jesus' holy name we have prayed. Amen and amen. If you're in the building, just type out amen in the comment section for me. Um, hallelujah. Today, um, today I want to quickly, briefly recap. Um, and as I'm recapping, if there are anything that I've put here that you guys have that I missed, that you guys also want to highlight, that's been very pertinent to you or touched you, please do write out in the chat as well. So I'm just going to briefly just run through keywords that I believe the Holy Spirit is going to be driving into us um, over the last seven days of the fast. It's very good to review. It's very good for us to just look at what God's been addressing. I believe some of these things God will deal with in greater um, dimensions this week. Um, so I encourage you guys, like even though we each day is a new topic, you know, they are all intertwined one way or the other. And for some of you, some points will hit home more than others. And I encourage you this fast to do your due diligence to allow the Spirit of God to do whatever work He wants to do in the areas that He is bringing up. In Jesus' name, amen. So, obviously, we started off with carnality. God was addressing um, our carnal minds um, in regards to how we um, how we live. And I, I echoed about, um, you know, those who set their minds in the flesh, do things in the flesh, etc. I believe Toyin brought up the whole thing about the body um, and about um, our appetite. Um, and I believe PS also came through when she spoke about, um, you know, she gave her testimony in regards of, the, of God dealing with her um, in the area of, of, of sexual sin and stuff. Um, we spoke about confession as well. PS echoed in that school that some of you guys you know, you need to confess, you know, to your leaders, to mature saints about certain things that's been happening. And we linked that to James 5, 16, about there's a type of confession that God reserves for healing that's only found in community. Um, and then we went on to, like, breakthrough. Uh, that was powerful from PS again, about God breaking through in, like, many waters in every areas of our lives. This led on to us talking about cycles and patterns and, and led on to us is also we're talking about how much are we um, submitted to the Lord's will, i.e. David was always inquiring, and when he inquired, he got instructions, uh, and he kept inquiring at every step to make sure that he was in alignment with God's will. We spoke about mingled seed, about the mixture of doing God's thing and then doing your own thing, about how that brings about mixture into your life. We spoke about idolizing emotions, about idols, I spoke about an idol being anything that you put, you know, before God. Um, we spoke about worldliness. We spoke about redemption. We said, don't stop striking. Tony brought the Captain Little Foxes. That was powerful, you know. And on Friday, I spoke about deception, our, our blessed foremother, Eve, and her interactions with the serpent and what happened and how it happened as well. Um, is there anything else anyone wants to highlight that's been good for them in the last seven days, six days? It was yesterday I spoke about holiness once again, and I spoke about the, you know, altars and so forth as well. So if we are honest, you know, this is quite a heavy list, guys. You know what I'm saying? And I've just touched on the surface of these things. And I really feel like these next five days, as God is exposed, you guys know that God's goal of exposure is to redeem. I don't want what's happening here <clears throat> in regards to the fast just to stay at the level of confession and expose and worries me. I want us to know that we start there and we end in redemption. Right in the, in the context of redemption. So on that note, we're going to go to a famous Psalms called Psalms 51. Does anybody know Psalm 51? It's a wonderful psalm. Uh, this is a psalm that was in my spirit, even from yesterday's session. Um, and um, I, I, we're going to go through the whole chapter, and we're going to pray this scripture. Um, and if my wife, let me know if there's anything else you want to touch on, sweetheart, um, during the, the morning session. But um, the reason why I'm here, really, guys, is because 
in James chapter 4, James says that the reason why there are quarrels and fights amongst you is that they come from the evil desires at war with you. When I mean this scripture, I'm not talking about specifically quarrels and fights in A and T. This is just your life in general. Amen. The whole body of Christ, your um, your people around you in your life. But um, James says that the issues outside all originate from the desires within us. Okay. James lets us know that when we are tempted, we are only tempted by our own desires. And when those desires um, um, are yielded to, it becomes sin. And when sin is fully grown, so guess what, guys? You know sin is, is even though sin is sin, sin can grow. <laughs> Meaning that we can have many, these sins or go into darker abominations of sins yeah bible says that when your sins fully grown it gives birth to death so even there we've got an analogy that sometimes sins almost seem like a like a like a baby that that can that can be fed and nurtured over time and reach a maturity stage that the only thing that's waiting for it is death so i'm echoing all these points here because the goal really is, is not that, oh, I don't want to die. Obviously, yeah, I don't want to die. But the root of it is desires. Desires. So today when say desires, well, I mean, right down in God says desires. Verse 2 says that, um, <laughs> verse 2 says, what does it say again now? says, um, so why are you freezing on me? So forgive me, guys. Verse 2 says that you desire and you do not have. So you murder. You covet and cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. Hmm. But verse 3 says, when you do ask, you don't receive because you ask wrongly or ask amiss because you ask to spend it on your own pleasure nlt says and even when you do ask you don't get it because your motives are all wrong you only want what will give you pleasure hmm. you are adulterous don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of god and i say it again let me just even put it on the screen here so sorry guys I'm here reading it, I'm not feeling it. Don't you know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Or do you suppose, or is it not to no purpose that the scripture says he yearns jealously over the spirit that he has made to dwell in us, but he gives more grace? Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. You sinners, sorry, cleanse your hands, you sinners. What am I saying? Sorry, God, sorry, God, forgive me. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Be wretched and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. Here, James gives us the prototype to how we deal with our ungodly desires that are producing fights and quarrels and chaos in our lives. He equals it to the reality that when we are living like this, we are actually in friendship with the world because we are now using um, godly principles, a.k.a. prayer. Verse 3 says, you ask and don't receive. But why? Because you ask wrongly to spend on your own passions. The motive and the intention behind our spiritual activity is for self. And when we do that, 
we become adulterous people. We're cheating on God. And when we're doing that, God calls it friendship of the world. And God reminds us that he is jealous over us. Then he reminds us that he gives more grace. Therefore, it says, God opposes the proud. What is it to be prideful in this context here? Is to hear what's being said and to say, that's not me. Or I don't do that. Or X, Y, and Z. But I give grace to the humble, those who are able to acknowledge their shortcomings. Then he goes on to say that this is the prototype to how you can maintain what I'm giving you guys. Verse 7, submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Submit yourselves to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. So God doesn't promise that after you submit, the devil won't come to tempt you again or to have it again. He said that that when you submit this time, you'll resist the devil and the devil will definitely flee from you because your submission, your surrender to God is your superpower, your your flexing, your 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 your, your it's grace and motion that, that enables you to resist the enemy. And he tells us to draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. James tells us to be wretched, mourn and weep. He wants you to feel, you know, what's the word here? He wants you to feel. The lament, the lamentations of your sins. Let your laughter be turned to mourning. Let your joy to gloom. This is what humility looks like before the Lord. When we acknowledge our wrongdoing, it produces in us a sorrow for our sin. Now I'm echoing all of this because, like I said earlier, we're going to go to Psalm 51 and we're going to really see how David responded and what I believe God's going to do in these next five days as we prepare for all tonight. Because I believe the Lord's going to go a bit more deeper with you guys when it comes to the root of some of the issues that we find ourselves in. But if you're following me so far, just hashtag follow in the comment section for me. This Psalms is probably a famous Psalm. I mean, Tosan has exposed himself. This is one he used to read a lot when he was fornicating. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. But this Psalm... This psalm, this psalm, this psalm. I mean, yeah, I think, I don't know, I've been saying for quite a bit now, so I think I've been here a few times. And I'm only here when I'm in, when I'm in sin, like Tossa. And um, it's a comforting psalm um, in the sense that David, King David, a man after God's own heart, you know, King David, that, you know, Jesus, great, 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 great grandfather, David, the chosen one. David, the, 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 David. Ah, David. Hey, David. David. Hmm. Man, David. This guy is at the pinnacle of the height of his kingship career. This guy is probably at the highest point of what I would say, if I use that word loosely, of his walk with God. And one day, people of God, when he was supposed to be going to fight wars. He said, nah, G, I'm going to stay at home. And David was idle, walking around, you know what I'm saying? And his eye just caught one fine, beautiful woman, caught her bathing. Hmm. And he sent for her. Hmm. And we don't know what happened next. When he sent for her, they did their thing. Hallelujah. Well, that's not hallelujah. Then I think she got pregnant, I remember. And then David said, ah, your husband, he was fighting for David, was in the battlefield. He said, call back your husband and let him come and lay with you so that it could be like, you know, the baby's yours, you know what I'm saying, kind of thing. <laughs> look, how, look how one sin of idleness led to sexual sin that's now led into devising evil schemes. Hmm. You lot are going loud in the comment section. <laughs> Please focus. <laughs> David now is devising an evil scheme 
deception. He's now trying to say, look, call your husband back home, call him back home, let him lay with you. So this baby will be like, he's your baby. Okay. Uh, the husband, because he's a man of integrity, says, how can I lay with my wife while my brothers are on the field dying? The man camps outside his door for the whole time. Ha! Huh. So David's like, Kai, what am I going to do here now? Um, you know what? Put Uriah, the front of the battlefield, so that when we go to war, they will kill him first. Once again, are you seeing how one sin is just growing? Hey! Growing, growing, growing. So this thought is makes me laugh. It gets me excited. Uriah dies. So David has committed adultery, sexual immorality. David uh, has tried to devise evil schemes, deception. David has now committed murder. All for one moment of being idle and walking around and seeing something that maybe he shouldn't have seen and he did see, but did not refuse his desires. And then here we are. So, you know, that's the story in a nutshell. There's more to it, but you can go read it. I think it's second time or 10 or something. And then this happens. And I think it's about a year later. I might, I might be wrong. Don't quote me in this. I think it's about a year later. Each king has a prophet. You know, and you should pray for your circle. Pray that God will have a prophet in your life that will come and talk to you about your life. You know, I have PS. You don't should find someone. And then... um. The prophet comes and check the, check the protocol here. And this is what I really love about the Bible, that remember, David's king. So, so there's a way you talk to a king, even when the king's in sin. Prophet knows his place. So the prophet comes to him and gives David a story about a man. And then asks David his opinions on what this man did. You know, is it good? Is it real? David's like, that man is wicked. He deserves to be blah, blah. Nathan says, David, King David, you are that man. Hmm. Hmm. So David, because though he was operating in deep sin and deception and all that good stuff, because at the heart of the heart, like all of us, by God's grace, he was a man after God's own heart. He didn't hide from his sin. He didn't deny his sin. He, he repented of his sin. And this is where this whole Psalms comes from this moment where David is being confronted about his sin that he felt he dealt with. And guess what, guys? David cried. David fasted. David did not leave the altar, I think, for like three days. He begged God that the baby, because the baby actually eventually was born, would not die. Ah, but unfortunately, guys, the baby passed away. Unfortunately, David was forgiven of his sin. Um, I'm telling this story because I just want to highlight what happens when we don't put a latch on our desires. Let's, let's type desires again in the comment section. I hope a and is hearing me today. I'm sure David... He didn't wake up that morning thinking about murder, Tossa. I'm sure David didn't wake up that morning thinking about which girl am I going to go into today. I, I just know that in a moment of idleness, in a moment of mismanagement of my time, in a moment of where I should be in one place, but I'm in another place, in my, in my moment of disobedience, ah, my, 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 my ability to resist is very low. Or when temptation comes, it finds a hold on me because I have opened the door of not being in the right place at the right time. And I find myself in areas of my life that I now start indulging in. And, and if you go a bit deeper with David, David always had a problem with women. You know, it's going to call it a spade a spade. David, from, you know, he, 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 was, he, he was born in that sin. You know what I'm saying? He he was his mom was not his dad's wife. So already he's been set up in that propensity. You know, I mean, over oh. his years, David has always had a thing with women. So 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 David lacked, even at the height of career, boundaries 
that would have stopped him from doing things that he knows that, you know what, this air for me is weak. What do they even say? Boundaries, guys. Like, I said, I said, King, at that moment in time, if he had put certain things in place, even if he saw the woman, let's say, look, I'm a bearer. If I ask you for a, for a lady, tell me no, because the boundary is that, David, you already have this woman. You know, they, they really had about a few women anyway, Shai, who was allowed to. But you can't have this woman, because that's somebody else's wife. David abused power. Because guess what? When a king says something, everyone's got to do what the king says. So you know what is wise for a king to set up laws against himself? You know what's wise for us as a and with our desires? Is to set up laws against ourselves that will bound us to do the right thing. Even when my heart wants to do the wrong thing. I was supposed to be praying and I'm preaching again. But I hope everybody's heard me today. Like, I thought it was good for us to explain the stories. So, like, when we read the Psalms, we don't just read it with like, oh yeah, creating me a clean heart. We understand <laughs> the levels that was happening here. There was disobedience, sexual immorality, devising of evil schemes, and murder. And it cost his seed their life. That was David's baby boy. And he died. Consequences. Hmm. Hmm. Do you know that this cost David not building the temple, guys? David had it in his heart to build God a house. God says, there's too much blood on your hands. But I'll let your son do it for me. Hmm. This is still King David. A man of the golden heart. It's still King David. Jesus, great, great, great grandfather. This is still King David in whom the Lord says, I will make an everlasting covenant with you that your seed will always sit on the throne, i.e. Jesus. Like, guys, I don't want to highlight this thing here. So because when we're talking about altars and choices and decisions and, and consequences, I want us to deep it. Even Abraham. Abraham was given a promise. Isaac. Abraham did his own thing, Ishmael. To this day, Ishmael is still fighting Isaac. 2,000, no, 4,000 plus years mm. later. Mm. But it's still Abraham, follow the faith. Still Abraham, our great, 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 great granddad. So I, I want to echo this in because I believe there are some desires within us. That are unholy. That these next five days, as we pray this Psalm 51, the Lord is going to remove these desires from our hearts. Let me get an amen in the comment section. Amen. Amen. Hmm. Amen. Hmm. Have mercy on me, oh God. Hmm. Have mercy on me, O oh God. Verse 1. According to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. David's first, first response is, Lord, have mercy. And David is even bold enough to say, Lord, you, you have mercy on me according to your steadfast love. David had a knowledge, a and T, that God still loves me in this place. That I'm in. I've killed someone. I've taken somebody else's wife. I've devised, devised evil schemes. But Lord, have mercy on me. According to your steadfast, this is audacious, guys. You know, one thing about repentance, and one thing about repenting to God, like, is that, and we have to do with the knowledge that this is who He is merciful, steadfast in love, 
A God that, if we can choose to repent, will not count our transgressions against us. This is beautiful. This is grace, mercy. And David is putting on this thing right now because there's no other thing left for him apart from him paying the penalty of his sin, which would be his own life and eternity in damnation. He goes on and gets a bit more descriptive. He says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and, and cleanse me from my sin. He, he starts to take language from the rituals that they had to do when it came to offering sacrifices, when they had to wash and prepare the animal that they were doing. And, and he, he, he's not equating himself as the animal, as the sacrifice, saying, Lord, wash me. Cleanse me. He, he's understanding that, wait a minute, th this sin in my life, it, it's now stained me. You know, you know, sometimes when we when we do certain things, like you know, if, you, if, if you go to his sin, like sexual sin, you know, sometimes, sometimes we do the whole wash yourself after it because suddenly when you bath after you just you get this natural feeling that you know i've been i'm pure again david understands that when i do wrong that there's impurity it imparts into my body into my soul that there is residue of my sins that now affect how i live lord wash me and not just wash me it's not just want to shower thoroughly and cleanse me for I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Transgressions. You know, there are sins that we can commit that are out of ignorance, guys. So we don't know better. But then there are there's sin and then there's transgressions. Transgression is when you know, but you still chose to do. That's when you transgress. Sins are things of just missing the mark. Sin at its core is our imperfection, is our frailty, our, you know, we're fallible creatures, so to speak. So we'll always sin in one way or the other. But not, but we can make a choice to transgress once we come into knowledge of what is right and what is wrong. And David is like, look, man, I'm not hiding this thing from you. I'm not even trying to play it down. I know my transgressions. <laughs> and listen, my sin is ever before me. <laughs> like, David will always look at Bathsheba and will always look at her and remember that I killed your husband. If you don't mind, guys, everyone can go and meet, please. That's what, so David will never forget what he did. That sin is always before him. Okay. And, and this sin that he's done, Father, he says, against you and you only have I sinned and have done what is evil in your sight, that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. You see, when we do, the Bible says that let God be true and every man a liar. What's the Bible saying here? The Bible saying, look, man, every time we do something wrong, we, we, we prove God to be right. Because that's why he sent his son. Because we needed redemption. We, 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 God is justified and blameless in his judgment when we do what is evil in his sight. Yeah, God knows that when we sin, it affects people, affects the person, the victims of our sin. But really, what sin is at its core is really against God. Every time I'm sinning, I'm choosing me before I choose God. Okay? And David is coming to a realization like, yo, man. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity. Father, this sin, it predates me, man. This thing was from birth. In sin, did my mother conceive. Guy, did, look, it's got to the root. He's acknowledged the root. He said, man, I was born into this thing. <laughs> Jesus is Lord. Six, behold, you delight in truth. In the inward being. Hmm. You teach me wisdom in the secret heart. I think NLT says um, you desire honesty from the womb. And even there you are teaching me wisdom. This is a key prayer point for us guys. Because here we see what brings God delight. 
But please God tell our ANT that we can be honest and truthful about what's happening inside her. And this honesty and this confession and this truth in the inward being, when we engage with that, we open up our lives to receive wisdom, for God to teach us wisdom in the secret heart. Hmm. Other versions say secret place. Hmm. Interesting. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And the Bible says that the fear of the Lord is to depart from evil. Sometimes, guys, when it comes to our desires that are not right, or maybe the, it's, it's, the, it's the right thing at the wrong time, we need wisdom that is born out of the fear of the Lord. And, and the fear of the Lord that comes from a place of, of us having honest confession before the Lord that will hold us and keep us from doing things wrong. My prayer in these five days for you, a &T, is that you will desire truth in the inward parts. That these next five days, God, you would acquire a wisdom that you will lay up in your heart. For this same David said, Lord, if I hide your word in my heart, I will not sin again. That David understood that anything I do is a function of the posture of my heart. I need the word of God to reign there. I need wisdom. That wisdom that will teach me to say no to sin. Is everyone following me here this morning so far? Because the prayer point is verse 10. Hallelujah. Let's go to verse 10. But if you're all following me so far, let's type following us in the comment section for me so far. And we're going to pray in a minute. I know time is gone. Verse 10. And this, and, and this is the prayer point that we, that we all need to be praying daily on to Friday, guys. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. Hmm. Create in me a clean heart, oh God. So I'm going to read it in the TPT version as well. It says, creating me a clean heart, O oh God. And renew a right spirit within me. TPT says, keep creating in me a clean heart. What does it say? Fill me with pure thoughts and holy desires, ready to please you. A&T, I want us to pray today. And our prayer point today is, Lord, take me back to the beginning. Like it was in Genesis. Take me back to the beginning like it was with my salvation, Lord. Hmm. And create in me a clean heart. For I acknowledge that it is my heart that is the bedrock of my desires, the root of my sin, they're the roots of my transgressions. And Lord, I'm asking as you created me a clean heart, bring a renewal of a right spirit. Fill me with pure thoughts and holy desires that are ready to please you. Let us pray today, a in Jesus' name. I'm asking God to create in me a clean heart. We can't fix our sins by trying to be holy. I mean, trying to like do holiness. No, no, no. He's got to, he's got to make it in us. First. We, got, we, we can't do this thing by trying to wash our sins by us. No, 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 no. He's got to do something here. He's got to create us to clean us. I want us to cry out to God this morning. James said, draw near to God today. Be wretched and mourn and lament. Let everything be laid before his throne. And say, Father, Create in me a clean heart. Let's pray. If you come up mute, let's pray together as a family. Father, we decree over this house today that we will be a house that is repentant over sin. 
that truly there are unholy desires in my heart holy things in my mind but unholy in my life where 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 father you did things they did in a we pray Father, therefore, I must in its sin, our desire, our clean heart, our fruit, our fruit, our fruit, our Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus, experience a fresh infilling of the Holy Spirit, O God. May there be a new wave of the pure force. Holy desires, O oh God. Father, today we are making a declaration over the house of a new thing, London, that Lord, we will be a people of clean hearts and clean hearts and clean hearts. God, I pray even now, wash our hands, we ask for a pure heart, and we ask for clean hands this morning. Right now, in the name of Jesus, Father, that you will begin to create and Forming us so new passions, new appetites. Lord, I decree right now in the name of Jesus that from the roots, from the roots, from the roots, from the roots, that you begin to uproot from the grounds of our hearts any other thing that doesn't reflect the kingdom of God. But even now, you begin to decree that the word will become like a seed in our hearts. And the world will begin to bud and to grow and to flourish righteousness in our lives, oh God. We make that decree right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Like a lamp and a light that will shine into the innermost parts of our being, oh God. We make a decree today, Father. There's nothing Yes, Jesus, that our hearts, oh God, will be made pure. Holy sight, oh God. Possess new desires, desires that crave after righteousness, oh God. Yes, Holy Spirit, we pray this right now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Babes, you're going to say something? Okay. Verse 12. Let my passion for life be restored. Our village will say, restore unto me the joy of salvation. It says here, taste in joy in every breakthrough you bring to me. <laughs> taste in joy in every breakthrough you bring to me. You know, you know what David's acknowledging here, guys? That at one point of his life, he was sold out for God. Mm. In one point of his life, salvation was enough. Being saved was enough. Mm. At one point in his life, the, 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 the deceitful desires that tried to say, look, man, I can offer you something. He knew that the joy that he wanted was really found in God's presence. And over time, this passion, this joy dwindled. And David is acknowledging that now, the way that God's going to restore the joy, hallelujah, thank you, Holy Spirit, is that in every breakthrough that comes, Pierre spoke about this last week, this breakthrough is going to carry with it a tasting that God is good. Taste and see, hallelujah, that God is good. And David is praying this prayer from now. But before he experiences it, he acknowledges what he's lost. But because he knows God and his ways, he knows that breakthrough 
it's going to bring joy. And I prophesy over this house today that as God brings breakthrough in many ways, breakthrough out of sin and breakthrough into you walking into your promise, that you will taste and see the joy of the Lord. And this joy will be your ultimate pleasure and passion in life. But he also preempts this and says also, Lord, hold me close, hallelujah, to you with a willing spirit that obeys whatever you say. Guys, breakthrough, restoration, deliverance, healing, all these things that God does must be maintained, must be stewarded, must be treasured, must be guarded. Hallelujah, guys. He understands that God's got to hold him close. If willing, you've got to be willing to obey whatever he says next. Without that, we undo, unfortunately, that which God is doing. Because now when we disobey, like I've been teaching you guys, we choose us over him. So we're going to pray for a situation of joy. Salvation. Okay, huh? Got your bag and everything. Well, we're gonna we're gonna, we're gonna pray that God would hold us up with a willing spirit. That we're gonna be a, an obedient house, man. A house that does does whatever whatever God says. That we may maintain and steward and guard and flourish in that which God is doing. Let us pray today in Jesus' name. Father, passion for the kingdom of God be restored over the house of a new thing, London, today. A restoration of the joy of salvation be unto us today. May I have today, a you're going to hold us with a willing spirit that will obey whatever you say. I decree today, Father, that you will choose obedience. You will choose obedience. You will choose obedience. You will close. You will close by a willing spirit. Oh, Father, we make a decree today, Lord, that you will make us willing to obey you. My God, you will uphold us with a willing spirit. Lord, I decree that A&T will be a house that is willing, willing and obedient, that we may eat of the fat of the land. I'm decreeing right now, what was lost, what was lost, what was lost, God, bring restoration, restore the joy of salvation, for the joy of the Lord is your strength, and indeed your strength is your ability to be yielded to the temptations of your flesh. So even right now, we speak that the source of our strength is the joy of the Lord, and we're praying this morning that, Lord, you will restore us. The joy of salvation. I decree even now, Father, this restoration, O God, indeed will be found in your presence. For in your presence there is a fullness of joy. May they be, Father God, a hunger and a thirst for the presence that we might yet be restored and might now receive the fullness of of your joy and that this joy of God will be our strength and this strength of God will enable us to stand in the day of temptation I speak of it in New in London strong Lord in the power of his might all we decree right now in the name of Jesus let this be our portion in Jesus name we pray Amen Amen. Hillary just put in the chat something that came to her spirit. She said that many of us begin with being sold out for God, but have tapped up before we've allowed God to do a complete work in us. The analogy of the, the Holy Spirit gave me is that it's like we stopping 
our medication before the course is over. We tap out of what God is doing because we feel like we've arrived and have stopped seeking God. Oh, my goodness. Obeying God because pride enables us to think well, to, well, good to go alone, that we no longer need to rely on God like we first did. Hey, Jesus is Lord. My goodness. Well, it looks like the house is resonating with that word. I really want to encourage you guys, like in your one-to-one -one time with the Lord, take this prayer, this Psalm 51, and go a little bit more deeper. Hmm. What he just said there is very powerful. Uh, very powerful. I don't want to talk on it more because we're not preaching. But babes, you can show your point and then the last prayer point I want to close, guys. Yes. Uh, you, could, you can go. I'll share my one last because it's more like a closing prayer. No problem, sweetheart. Okay. So after David asks for his joy to be restored, um, after he asks God to uphold him with a willing spirit that he may obey God, David now knows that God's redemption, God's restoration on his life is not just for David. He says, then I can show other guilty ones how loving and merciful you are. Oh, isn't God good, man? They will find their way back home to you knowing that you will forgive them. Wow. He's committed murder. Device evil schemes. I want to say, I want to keep repeating his sins so you understand the depth of this. Murder. Evil schemes. Adultery. And has the audacity to say that after God creates a clean heart in him, after God forgives him and restores him, he now is being positioned to perform a ministry of showing other guilty ones how loving and merciful God is. That there is still a way back home to God. Don't care how far you've gone. Don't care how backslidden your friends are right now. Your life has become evidence that God redeems. That's David's heart. And so this is why, even now, God can still say, though David sinned and done evil, I can still say he was a man after my own heart. Because the heart of the father is his harvest. Hmm. David goes on to explain and to say, deliver me fully. So he's still humble. <laughs> deliver me fully from every sin so, so David understands that there's something called residue David understands that he can be forgiven but huh, there's still a work of deliverance that needs to happen in me okay cool 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 even the sin that brought blood guilt I believe this is about him um, killing and you know and his baby also dying then my heart will once again be thrilled to sing the passionate songs of joy and deliverance. Come on, people of God. David keeps it a hundred, man. He knows that, mate, I'll be able to, 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 to testify, celebrate, rejoice fully when I know that my deliverance has been fully. David is not asking for a half half to, he's not asking for a pass here. He's asking for a full restoration like he never ever sinned. David is piercing into our day where God says the blood of the lamb will wash you like you never ever did. David is asking, Lord, make me white as snow. <laughs> this is David in Old Testament. How much more us in the New Testament, guys? Lord, unlock my heart. Unlock my lips and I'll be overcome with joyous praise. You know, I love how the worship team, round of applause for a new, a new sound. I love how they're introducing the element of praise in our worship now. 
<laughs> David understands the spiritual warfare weapon of praise. David understands that, guys, you won't be able to contain yourself when you experience the deliverance of the Lord. You will praise the Lord. All that's within you will imagine. David understands the power of praise. Wow, hallelujah. For the source of your pleasure, it goes a bit more deeper now, it's not in my performance. All the sacrifices that I might offer to you. David knows that what really pleases God is not that we can give sacrifices to him. Like God's not really, even though he requires it, that's not the heart desire of God. No, no, no. Like, no, 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 no. Your performance is not what he's after here. This is deliverance, man. My God. Thank you, Jesus. The fountain of God's pleasure is found in the sacrifice of my shattered heart before you. You will not despise my tenderness as I bow humbly at your feet. What pleases God, PA? A broken and a contrite heart? God can never reject a broken and repentant heart, guys. He can reject your offering and your sacrifice, though. He can reject your works that you might try to use to appease God. You see, when I'm reading scripture, what I'm reading is that, Ayo, don't think because you just chose to fast that the fast is going to take away the sin. No, my friend, that's not what this is. Don't think because he gave up this and gave up that, that means that, you know what, God, I'm proving to you that I'm really sorry of my sin. No, no. You're really sorry over your sin when I have your heart. When your heart is broken over this thing. <laughs> Is a and hearing me today? God wants you, not what you can offer him. And you can't offer him nothing because he's God. He owes everything. Is, is everyone following me here today? Hmm. So this fast is only really fasting, Leke, if it's from the heart. Not that the clothes of my mouth. This fast is really preparing me for deliverance. If it's something that I'm asking generally from my heart, I'm not just turn up on Friday and it's got to do something. God is after your intention, motive. You hear me following me here today? And what I love the most here is that verse 18 and 19 tells us something. He says, because you favor Zion, Zion is another word for the church, the body of Christ in the Old Testament. Do what is good for her. Be the protecting wall around to Jerusalem. Jerusalem is where Zion is placed in the Old Testament. And as you guys know, in the, in the heaven is our new Jerusalem. What's he doing here now? God is not just addressing, David doesn't understand that. God, my repentance is not just God addressing my sin. God is now looking at the whole body, the whole of Israel. He understands the, the benefit of that. If every one of us in ANT can be repentant, it, the goodness and the protection, the walls that are going to be built are, 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 are going to be done through the work of repentance, the work of deliverance. God now says, he now says, because you favor us, do good to us, build the walls. Let it be that my repentance becomes a fence in the house of a new phenomenon because the fence in my family that through my repentance I'm now shielding future temptation and future sin future I'm now in a place where God can keep us and sustain us because I have made acknowledgement and repentance from my sin and they're following me to her I love this because once again we're realizing that though the sin is personal it, it still has corporate consequences and effects and God is dealing with all of us individually because corporately God is making us into a body that can be fully mature and fully expressing to the world so I'm going to quickly pray over you and PS will pray and then we'll close up my prayer over a new in London is that a praise will erupt from your belly hmm. that the Lord would use the weapon of praise in these next five days 
like he did in Chronicles, and praise brought confusion to the enemy's camp. That, 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 that the Lord will begin to unlock your hearts and your lips. Yeah, because I believe there's something about even how we are in the natural that embodies what God is doing in the spirit. So this is not about whether you like licking your hands, you like shouting or not. It's not about that. It's just drop your personality at the altar. This is about what happens to all of us when something we want comes for us. We, we will be exuberant and filled with joy. Father, I even decree and declare that, Lord, the sacrifice on the altar that we will bring to you on Friday will be a broken and a contrite heart. That we will not present works. We won't present things that we have done. No, no, no. We will present to you our hearts. And as A&T presents their hearts before the throne of the Father. Do good to Zion, O God. Be the protecting wall around our lives. Father, even now, I just prophesy over the walls of a new thing, London. I decree, be rebuked, be rebuked, sorry, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Lord, that in the house of a new thing, London, that out of this time of prayer and fasting, raise up people like intercessors, like watchmen. Ah, raise up gatekeepers. Raise up people, oh God, who will make it, Lord Father, their ambition to pray and intercede for one another. Would you would the, would the, would the, would the ministry of intercession be birthed in a new way in this house, Father, as you will build our walls and as you favor and do good to us? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. P.S. You may go. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Really mm -hmm. powerful. Um, I'm just gonna lock my scripture. And Philippians two. Do you want to copy it again into the chat? Uh, no, it's alright. I'll just get on my phone here. Yeah. Um. Amen. Glory be to God. Um, yeah, I just, I'm going to read this scripture, Philippians 2.13. It says, not in your own strength, for it is God who is all the while effectually mm. at work in you, energizing and creating in you the power and the desire both to will and to work for his good pleasure and satisfaction and delight. I'm going to read it in another version. Um. NLT says, for God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases him. Mm. Another word says, God will continually revitalize you, implanting within you the passion to do what pleases him. Yeah, to do what pleases him. That's really, you know, um, just as we are in week two of our fast, it's easy at this point to, um, you know, to get um, weary or to, to be tired, if we're all honest. Everyone put tired in the chat if you've been feeling tired, man. Waking up at 6 a.m. is no big, it's, 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 it's a big deal, you know what I mean? Well, for some of us, 5.30, some of us, 5 a.m., you know, every morning, shut up. My goodness, <laughs> on top of life, fasting, work, you know, um, it's not easy. And I believe that God honors this sacrifice in terms of being here and being present and being engaged. But it's not, it's, I was going to say it's not tired. It's not easy, but it's easy to become slack, you know, it's easy to, um, it's, it's easy to lose momentum, <clears throat> lose motivation, lose will lose desire lose fervency lose passion or the passion to go down it was at 100 percent. now it's at 80 percent. this is the week where we start to let things slide a little bit like mm, you know maybe i can 
watch the show and nearly coming to the end of the or maybe we can do you know like it's it's easy it's easy to you know um and you wouldn't be human if that temptation wasn't there but I really want to this scripture this word this word this in that we read it says for God is working in you God is working in you by his spirit he gives you the desire Mm -hmm. and the power to do what pleases him as the amplified says that he energizes you he ge- he energy he vi- revitalizes you um to do what pleases him to do what he is required of you it's not on you alone though you may feel like you're putting in all this um all this energy and stuff really it is god that works in you and you know when i get to that place of you know oh you know on friday i was like oh god man i've been praying i feel like i've been praying 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 everything is a prayer and and then i my prayer was god give me the grace to pray give me the grace to seek you for it is you that works in me to do what pleases you by the power of your spirit and so now like i just want us just to begin to pray first in the holy ghost i'm going to give us one minute if you can come up with mute just begin to pray in the holy ghost just pray in the spirit and so we're gonna we're gonna pray as we're praying in the spirit give me the grace to pray give me the grace to seek you in the word work in me holy spirit energize me and create in me the power and the and the desire to do what pleases you. I've just put it in the chat. Let's just begin to pray that now. Give us the grace to pray. Give us the grace to pray. Give us the grace to speak in the word. Hallelujah. Give us the grace to speak in the word. Give us the grace to speak in the word. Give us the grace to speak in the word. Give us the grace to speak in the word. Give us the grace to pray. The grace to be touched in this area, O Lord. What can the grace is? Mama, the Rabbi, the Rabbi, the Rabbi, the Rabbi, the 
Amen. And I just I feel led to say this that for some of you today, like you know, in the instead of prayer or for a long hour of prayer, some of you may need to take that 20 minutes, that 20, I was gonna say that 20 minute snack, a small, small snack. No, that 20 minute nap, <laughs> a 20 minute nap, that small, small nap. You might have to do it. You know, sometimes our greatest warfare is also just resting. You know what I mean? You may need to just rest in God's presence, put on an instrumental and just rest and let him speak to you as you rest, you know, whether that be in dreams or whatever. But let's not overexert ourselves um, trying to gain something, but let us also be mindful of what the spirit wants to do in us. And part of that sometimes is rest. Like you need to rest so that he can... Um, distinctly and clearly speak to you is everyone with me um family yeah so yeah. for some of you you may have to schedule listen that lunch break just i don't know you may have to just i'm busy with the lord in the calendar you know what i'm saying you put on that we'll share whatever instrumentals in slack put that on and just simply just rest yeah still yourself before the lord yeah so everyone put rest in the chat we want to we want to go the long way we want to we want to do it we want to go the long run and part of doing that is also you know knowing when it's time for us to 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 uh just take sit back and allow the holy spirit um to to speak to us in a place of rest amen amen, amen. so you've received your prophetic instruction today rest before the lord still yourself before him instrumentals you know if you um I, I encourage you have your notepad there write down whatever comes to mind whatever the lord says to you um all of that is prayer dreams all sorts so father i just pray that you just release grace for us to do this today lord help us as we plan for it when the moment arrives, help us to stay committed, to yield to this instruction, for us to rest before you, to be still before you, and allow you to really speak to us, oh God. For indeed, prayer is two ways, oh Father God, us speaking to you and you speaking to us. And I just pray that the words you speak, Lord, will bring great affirmation and healing and restoration to your children this hour, that your words will bring revelation and insight to areas of their life that you want to speak on, Father. And I pray that this today, that you would give A&T the grace to go and to prosper. I decree Psalms 1, verse 3 over your lives, that you will all be trees planted by streams of waters, that you will bear fruit in every season, that your leaves won't wither, that whatever you put your hands to do will prosper. I speak the favour of God upon this house. I speak the favour of man upon this house. And I speak that this week, Father God, you will give many people reasons to praise you and to, and to adorn you because of the great things that you would do in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Love you.